I'm going to talk to you tonight about uh, a couple things, or one thing that's near and dear to my heart, and uh, about leadership, but primarily about people. And you know, when you say something like it's not about the coffee, it begs the question, right? And uh, when I I wrote a book, and it came out a couple of years ago, and when I uh, took it to the chairman of the board of Starbucks, a guy named Howard Schultz, and I said, hey, I've got this book, here's the draft, and here's what my working title and what I want to call it. It's not about the coffee. Well, Howard's this absolute coffee guy, coffee fanatic, you know, and you could always tell when Howard was a little pissed off, you know, because his eyebrows would drop, you know, his mouth would drop, and so I knew he wasn't pleased with the title of the book. And I said, just just read the draft, and then we'll, I'll come back in a couple of weeks, and we'll talk about it. And, so I read the draft, and I came back, talked about it. He says, okay, I get, I get what you're trying to do, and it's okay to call it it's not about the coffee. So when you make that statement, you know, it, it begs the question, what is it about? Well, it, of course, it's about the people. Now, when I first went to Starbucks, there were 28 stores, and it was a little tiny company, losing lots of money. I didn't know whether it would survive or not. Uh, and I remember uh, the first day I went into work, like all companies, they give you their little handbook, right? And in the handbook, it you know usually has a mission statement or what you're about and all sorts of things. And I remember it was so odd because it never mentioned a word about people until it got to about page 15 in this little book. Everything was about the coffee, what you can't do, you know, and then you had to sign the book at the end of the page under threat of death, you know, if you ever broke any of the rules in the book. And I thought, God, that's strange. There's nothing in here about people at all. And uh, as I had always believed that, you know, it's people that make companies or any organizations grow. And so it, it took a while for me in my own mind to work through it. And it took a while for us as an organization to come to the understanding that even though we were in the coffee business, it was still about people. And we like to say that uh, we're not in the in the coffee business serving people, but we're in the people business serving coffee. Now, somebody will say, somebody's thinking right now in this room, well, Howard, that's just a bunch of BS. You know, that's, what does that mean? That's just a play on words. But words are important. Words are really important. If you said you were in the coffee business serving people, that meant that you're all about coffee, right? And that people came second. But when you said you're in the people business serving coffee, it says that people come first. See, coffee by itself, you know, it was an ape. Until that uh, goat herder in Yemen or Ethiopia, wherever he was, you know, saw his goats eating the coffee cherries and saw that they were getting high on the cherries and said, there must be something in there for me, nothing would have happened with coffee. So coffee had to be grown, had to be harvested, had to be shipped, had to be roasted, and had to be served. And that's all by people. Coffee by itself, like anything else in life, doesn't do anything. It's just there. So you know, in your, in your, in your world, you know, and certainly on the campus world, you know, you deal with buildings. You know, you deal with budgets. You know, the, the, the universities probably, if they're like the University of Washington or any campuses today, you know, and and probably many of you, we were talking at dinner about, you know, going to get your master's degree after your undergraduate. Maybe for some of you that are trying to do that, it's very hard to get into graduate schools right now because they're loaded up and states have no money. So, but it's not really about budgets either, is it? And it certainly isn't about degrees or master's degrees or any of those things. It's about people. It's about, now, are these things important? Getting a graduate degree important for some? Yeah, sure. You know, you gotta have buildings on campus, otherwise, you know, where are you, where are you gonna go to learn? And, uh, and certainly we all have to operate with budgets, but it's not the reason for being not the reason for being. It's the things that we do along the way. You know, the reason for being all revolve around people. And it doesn't make any difference whether you're in the widget business, making a widget that goes into a printing press, you know, that's gonna print a newspaper, somewhere along the line, it's gotta serve another human being. If you're in biotech, you know, and, and you create some new drug or some new process, it's gonna go to serve another human being. It doesn't make any difference whether you're the mad scientist that never like wants to talk to people, head down, just looking at what they're doing, you are going to have an effect on another human being somewhere down the road. But we forget that. It's so easy to forget it. It's so easy to get caught up in the stuff, in the what we do, 
and we forget that we're here to serve other human beings. So uh, tonight I'd like to, I'm going to, because we, we have, I usually I do three, and the, and the first one is on, you can go on my website and at howardbr.com, and it, it talks about one hat. And I, I won't go into all that tonight. Tomorrow we're going to spend some time on it. But tonight I thought I'd talk about two that I think are in interesting to talk about, particularly in the context of organizations and what can happen in organizations and what sometimes doesn't happen. So the first one is the person who sweeps the floor should choose the broom. And it, it's kind of an interesting one. I always uh, I had given lots of speeches with inside of Starbucks. And, and whenever I give this speech and there's a purchasing person in the, in the audience, they always get a little nervous because they think I'm advocating that everybody gets to choose their own broom, period, right? And that's going to create anarchy and certainly a lot of purchase orders that uh, they don't want to have to print out. But it's not what I'm talking about at all. When I talk about the person who sweeps the floor should choose the room, I'm talking about people being in charge of their own destiny with inside of companies. And the people that have experience doing things with inside of organizations should be the people that are giving the most input into the tools that they use or the way to do their job. So let me give you kind of an example. And let's, let's take the broom example, right? So let's say that Starbucks needs to hire uh, some floor sweepers because we want to have really clean floors. So we go out and we run an ad for, for floor sweepers. And you know we do some interviewing and we hire some people and we bring them in. In most organizations, what happens is the person comes in, they get handed the broom, and they say, I want you to go sweep that floor. You know, Make it nice and clean, just sweep that floor. And if you had the audacity to just say, well, don't you have a different broom? I would rather have this kind of, a different kind of broom. You know, most bosses, most organizations say, just use the broom that we gave you. It's my belief that we need to flip that on its head. When we go out and we hire young, bright people like you, you come into organizations, the first thing we should do is sit down with you and talk to you about the mission of the organization, not just give you the handbook, right, and say, read this and sign it when you're done. But sit down and talk about what is the meaning of the mission, because by itself, it's meaningless until you have a conversation about it, until you can ask questions about it. So we should go through and talk about the mission of the organization. And then we should go through and then we should say, you know, we've hired you to sweep floors and what we want to have, one of our goals, is to have the shiniest floors of any retail establishment in the city of Boulder. As measured by us going out, looking at other establishments, by our customers' feedback, etc. The second goal is we want to increase our floor sweeping productivity by about 5% a year. 